Hello viewers, uh, welcome to Elimu TV, a, a station where we are going to learn and um, explain together. We are going to have our biology from 3 lesson 23, whereby your tutor will be Mr. Gerald. We are going to handle the topic on um, ecology and the subtopic uh, parasitic worms. But before that, we are going to have the following lesson goals, whereby by the end of the lesson, you should be able to identify uh, different parasitic worms and their causative agents. We are going to have uh, our, the first parasitic worm is the, our Ascaris lubricoides. Whereby Ascaris lubricoides is a parasitic roundworm which belongs to the phylum Nematoda. Ascaris lubricoides is widespread in distribution and infects small intestines of pigs and human beings. It may also occur in other organs of the body. You can have a diagrammatic presentation of the Ascaris uh, lubricoides. It may also occur, uh, we have said that the genus Ascaris is the largest nematode parasitic to humans. It is characterized by a brownish yellow, yellow color with mouth parts having three lips, as you can see from our screen. Uh, the male is about 25 centimeters long and 0.4 centimeters in diameter, while the female, uh, while the female is about 35 centimeters long and 0.5 centimeters in uh, diameter. So as you can see from our screen, the female is more larger than uh, the male uh, Ascaris lubricoides. We are now going to look at the modes of which this Ascaris lubricoides is transmitted. The adult fem female lays eggs in the small intestine of the host. Uh, the eggs are as being, uh, you can see the eggs in our screen. The eggs are passed with feces and may be swallowed uh, by new host through contaminated food and water. Contaminated vegetables or fruits which are not wa washed well before being eaten or are uh, also sources of uh, infection. There is also direct infection uh, from feces to mouth by ants, especially in children. When they are, sw are swallowed by a host, the eggs are dissolved, releasing the lava. These penetrate the intestinal wall and enter the bloodstream. They move to the liver and then to the heart and lungs. In the alveoli, they grow and mold twice. The lava then migrate up to the trachea, where they cause irritation and so are coughed out and may be swallowed down into the esophagus, stomach and small intestine, where they finally uh, mature in adults. I want us now to look at the effects of this Ascaris lubricoides uh, to the host, uh, since we have said it has got two hosts, whereby it is uh, the humans and the pigs. During the migration of the larva, they cause irritation in the trachea that lead to lung dam uh, damage and infection with other diseases. Uh, if the infection is heavy, a lot of digested food is consumed by the parasite in the intestine and this leads to malnutrition in the host especially uh, in children. They are cycled in the human host. The parasites feed uh, on blood and therefore can cause anemia to the host. Very few, um, sorry, very heavy infection can also lead to intestinal blockage where victims develop large round uh, stomachs. The worms may also enter the bile duct, the pancreatic duct, and also the appendix, causing uh, further complications. Uh, this Ascaris lubricoides, it has got adaptive characteristics uh, which enables it to survive. The first adaptive characteristic is, uh, is that it has got two hosts, whereby we have said the hosts are the human uh, beings and also the pigs. This ensures that it uh, always has a ready host for survival. The second adaptive characteristic is that it may lay many eggs to increase the chances of survival even when some are destroyed. Another one is that the eggs have a protective shell to survive uh, ash environmental conditions. Another one is that as uh, it has got a thick elastic cuticle which protects it against the digestive enzymes of the host enabling uh, it to survive in the alimentary canal. Another adaptive characteristic is that it has tissue tolerant to low oxygen concentration uh, which is a characteristic of the gut since we have said that it is normally found in the gut. Um, another characteristic is that it has a muscular pharynx through which it sucks digested food from the host um, intestine in, uh, into its own gut. We are now going to look at another um, uh, we, are going also, we are now going to look at another parasitic worm whereby here we are going to look at the, the schistosomiasis or we can call it bilazia. Uh, this is a parasitic disease of the blood. It is caused by a flat flat worm of the phylum uh, platelmindes of the genus schistosoma and this, uh, in our diagrammatic representation there is showing us the different species of schistosoma uh, there are different species of schistosoma that infect human beings. Uh, these uh, species include, we have the schist uh, schistosoma mansoni, 
we have schistosoma hematobium we also have schistosoma japonicum these are all species of the schistosoma uh, the parasite are uh, found in freshwater can uh, canals uh, lakes rivers dams and also rice growing areas we are now going to look at the modes in which they are transmitted the parasite is spread when people drink contaminated um, uh, uh, water well, uh, sorry, the parasite is spread when people drink water contaminated by a larval form called uh, Caesarea. Also, the parasite can penetrate uh, the skin when bathing or wading through water containing lava. Once in the body, they get into the blood streams and migrate to the liver where they mature into adults. After coupling uh, of the adult worms, eggs are shed into the blood vessels or the alimentary canal. When the feces or, or urine containing eggs are, are disposed of into water, the eggs hatch into larva called uh, Mirashidia, and uh, the Mirashidia find and, and penetrate the water snails, such as uh, the Balinas. It is from the snails that the uh, infective stage Caesarea emerge and can now infect human beings who stand bath or drink in such water. Let us now look at the effects of uh, this uh, species that we are seeing here in, our, uh, in the bodies. The parasite damages the host skin when penetrating and this causes itching. Once in the blood, the adult schistosoma releases chemical substances which uh, may cause fever. The adult worms have sharp spines which they use to tear through the veins and enter into the intestines or the urinary bladder. This causes uh, blood to move in urine or stool. This can eventually lead to anemia. The person also experiences abdominal pains and also uh, diarrhea. If untreated, the disease can result in death due to exhaustion or infection of other diseases due to reduced uh, body immunity. Um, schizosoma has got um, adaptive, characteristics of, um, uh, adaptive characteristics which enable it to, um, to survive, but we can look at how to prevent uh, or to treat this disease. This uh, bilazia can be prevented by proper sanitary disposal of both feces and urine. Deep pit latrines or flush toilets should be used. Urine and feces should not be disposed of into rivers, dams and other water bodies. All drinking water should be chemically treated or boiled in order to keep the eggs. Uh, people should not bathe or swim in water invested with snails. People should wear protective shoes and clothes and avoid walking bare feet in swampy areas. The snail should be killed by spreading the water with the, what we call the multicides. Infected persons should also receive proper um, treatment. Having uh, said and done that, we are going to have the following activity whereby you are required to identify the causative antigens of the schizosomiasis. For more of this lesson, you can uh, refer to KLB, Secondary Biology Students Book 3, um, Nairobi, the Kenya Literature Bureau. Uh, to get this lesson and many more of our biology lessons, you can send us an SMS through the number that is on our screen, or you subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is the Limu TV, or you uh, subscribe to our Facebook page, which is also Limu TV, or you tweet us at Limu TV underscore Kenya. Let us subscribe to all these channels so that we get uh, many more of our valuable lessons, uh, which uh, then we shall um, at least be good. Thank you.